Look, if you're stressed out trying to build a brand that builds unlimited income, impact and independence, then stay locked into this video because I'm about to teach you the seven branding mistakes that you're probably making that are killing your business. You only have seven seconds to become a brand. And when you master these seven seconds, there's no limit to the life you can live and the wealth you can build. What's good family. Welcome to the seven second brand. The only place that coaches entrepreneurs on how to turn your average business into an addicting brand without the headache or the heartache in just seven seconds. I'm Justin J Dunn, brand strategist and designer, and I teach business using my seven part system. I call them seconds. Definition is your brand strategy. Execution is your brand experience. Perception is your brand identity. Generation is your marketing. Conversion is your sales. Elevation is your upsells and subscription is your repeat sales. Today's video hits on three out of the seven seconds, their definition, execution, and perception. Why? Because today I'm going to show you seven branding mistakes that are killing your business and keeping you from building an addicting brand. So look, let me be the first to tell you that I'm not one of those people that just hop in front of a camera and talk about something that I just read on a blog or saw on TikTok. All right. Everything that I talk about on this channel comes from real life trial and error. Look, I have war wounds, all right? I actually go to war in this entrepreneurship life, okay? So these mistakes you're about to learn are mistakes that I've personally made. Some of them lost me money. Some of them took my sleep. Some of them made me cry, okay? Thank God today my businesses are alive and thriving, but it hasn't been always like this. And I will be sending you on a complete dummy mission if I sat in front of this camera like this and acted like it's been all like this from day one. And to be honest, I'm still learning. I'm still getting better. I'm still trying to master my craft, right? I started this entrepreneurship journey back in 2010 and I have what seems like a hundred failed businesses, made a thousand mistakes and felt like quitting 10,000 times. But like the great philosopher Nipsey Hussle says, I just didn't quit. And I have a feeling that because of my transparency, you won't quit either. So let's dive into these branding mistakes that are killing your business. Branding mistake number one, lack of clarity. One of the biggest mistakes I see entrepreneurs make is not having a crystal clear understanding of their brand. This is who they are, what they do, who they serve and how they serve them uniquely different from the competition. There is nothing you can do in your business if you lack clarity. And I mean nothing. If you aren't clear on who you are, how do you expect your customers to know who you are and if you can even help them? When you're clear on who you are, you're also clear on who you're not. This guides all of your decision making when it comes to your designs, your sales, marketing, advertising, hiring, firing, and so on. By knowing exactly what your brand stands for, you can easily identify what doesn't align with your brand's identity and values. This can help you avoid making decisions that could potentially harm your brand's reputation or confuse your target audience. For example, if your business really cares about sustainability and eco-friendliness, you wouldn't want to partner up with or promote products that aren't environmentally friendly. This obviously would go against your brand's values and messaging, right? If your brand is geared towards high-end luxury, you wouldn't want to be associated with products or services that are low quality or cheap. Make sense? A good tip that I always teach my community is, your business should be looked at as a living and breathing person. Why? Because you're trying to attract living and breathing people. At least I hope you are, right? The more human your brand is, the more attractive it is to humans. So how do you make your business more human? Give it a personality. Give it a style. How does it dress? How does it talk? Who does it talk to? Creating who your brand is should be your first priority. It's the foundation. It's the soul and spirit of your business. Once you establish the human identity of your brand, You'll possess all of the brand clarity needed to grow your baby into a healthy, wealthy adult. So what can you do to avoid lack of clarity? Number one, get clear on your brand strategy. Take the time to think about what you want to achieve and why you care so much to achieve it. Number two, define your target audience and their pain points. This will help you create products that relieve their pains. Number three, narrow down your focus and what you're truly passionate about and what you can really be great at. Number four, Create a plan and take action with purpose. Don't just wing it and hope for the best. Understanding who your brand is and who it is not is crucial for maintaining consistency in your brand messaging and identity. This can help you build a strong brand reputation, attract the right target audience, and differentiate your brand from competitors. I put countless hours into going from brand confusion to brand clarity. So if you put in the work and establish the most important details about your brand before you do anything else, I promise you, okay, 
you're gonna walk away with the crystal clear brand clarity. So after lack of clarity, next is branding mistake number two, inconsistency. Building a consistent brand is essential for a successful business. Even though that statement is true, I see so much inconsistency in branding by so many entrepreneurs. And because of my OCD, right, for design, it really takes me to a place where I start to itch. Like I seriously am allergic to brand randomness, okay? It's a real life allergy that I made up years ago, okay? To help me cope every time I see a business using scattered colors, fonts, words, images. When I tell you that I'm really allergic to this, like it's bad, like my eyelids get swollen, my throat closes up, my brain start itching, right? <laughs> Look, it may not be a real allergy, but it really does feel like it. Inconsistent branding confuses your customers and makes it difficult for them to understand what your brand represents. This leads to confusing your customers and losing their trust. And I say this all the time, if there's no trust, there's no checkout. If your branding is scattered, it creates a perception that your business is unorganized, unprofessional, or unreliable. This is the fastest way to kill your business. This goes especially for my small business owners. You don't have the bank account that big companies have. So you don't have the grace to make huge mistakes. For small businesses, one bad move and it's curtains. Now, before it gets there, let me help you. Here are a few strategies to execute so that you don't lack consistency in your brand. Number one, develop a clear brand strategy. A clear brand strategy is essential for assuring that all aspects of your business are consistent. This strategy should include your brand's mission, vision, values, personality, and uniqueness. Number two, create brand guidelines. Brand guidelines are rules for your messaging, your colors, visuals, your tone of voice, and the fonts you use. These guidelines should never be broken and every member on your team and every freelancer you hire should know them. This ensures everyone is on the same page when it comes to branding. Number three, use consistent visuals. Use consistent visuals across all channels, including your website, social media, and advertising. If your brand personally is corporate and buttoned up, shoot your photos in an office setting. Now, if your brand is more edgy, try to shoot your videos in an abandoned warehouse without getting arrested. <laughs> I mean, if you really are about that life and you really are your brand and you're edgy, I mean, you shouldn't be afraid of getting arrested. <laughs> Number four, monitor your brand. Regularly monitor your brand to ensure that all messaging and visuals are consistent. Inconsistent branding can have serious consequences for your business including confusing customers, harming your reputation, and hurting your profit, and ultimately killing your business. It's important to remember that consistent branding is not a one-time fix, but an ongoing process. As your business grows and evolves, your branding may need to adapt as well. By following these steps, you can ensure that your branding remains consistent and aligned with your brand strategy. Consistent branding is all about building trust and loyalty with your customers. When your branding is consistent, Customers know what to expect from your business and they're more likely to choose your brand over the competition. By investing in consistent branding, you're investing in a long-term success for your business. Now, after branding consistency, branding mistake number three is little to no investment in design. The first thing a potential customer notices when they see your brand are your visual branding assets. This is the name, logo, website, packaging, photos, and videos. These assets speak volumes about you and your brand. Now the question is, what are they saying? Your branding has two jobs, and that's to catch attention and keep attention. In today's noisy, crowded, distracted world, catching and keeping attention of your dream customers has never been harder. We're all scrolling through an infinite thread of content and engaging with thousands of brands every single day. And because of that, we're numb. Numb to your content, your messaging, and numb to another business like yours claiming to have the best new thing to sell. So to take a stranger from numbness to filling you, see what I did there? <laughs> the answer is design. Don't believe me? Just watch. Let's play a game. I'm gonna show you three images and I want you to choose option A or option B. Which shampoo is more expensive? A or B? A, right? Next. Which coffee is the strongest? A again, right? Okay, last one. Which cookie brand has the healthiest ingredients? Gotta be B, right? But you wanna know what's something funny? You make all of these assumptions about the most expensive shampoo, the strongest coffee, and the healthiest cookies when the content on the packaging is the exact same. You missed that, didn't you? Let's look at it again. We have the words daily clarifying shampoo with the same exact tree logo. So why do we assume A is more expensive? 
Let's look at the coffee. We have the same Arabia coffee logo with morning blend on the front of the back. So why do we assume A is the strongest? And then there's the cookies. Same bakery logo with the same delicious, crunchy cookies on the front. So why is B the healthiest choice? The answer to these questions is design. But why, Justin, why? Because design influences perceptions. I just told you that, hardhead. <laughs> design has a huge impact on the way we perceive things. The design of a product, a space, or any visual element can influence our perceptions in a number of ways, both consciously and unconsciously. One of the primary ways that design influences perception is through its aesthetics. The colors, shapes, textures, and overall style of a design can evoke emotions and feelings. For example, the bold in your face explosive design of the coffee bag produced a feeling that made you assume bag A was stronger. And the elegant styling of the shampoo bottle sitting next to what looks like some hot stones from a spa, right? That screamed high quality luxury. So A just had to be more expensive. With great design, you can charge what you want and more. You can attract your dream customers. You increase brand recognition and be known for the problem you solve. You differentiate your brand and stand out from the competition. You gain credibility and trust in your industry. You improve customer loyalty and you become the first thought and first choice to your ideal customer. Now with bad design, you keep lowering your prices to make sales. You never attract your dream customers. You stay unknown, you're a, a hidden gem, right? You get lost in a crowded industry and you're just another business that sells blank. You give off scammy and sketchy feels. You have no customer loyalty and you're easily forgotten and never thought of really. In order to snatch attention and keep attention, you have to get serious about investing in design and your brand. And when I say investing, it doesn't have to be expensive or time consuming, but it does require some commitment. You can hire a freelance designer from places like Upwork, 99designs or Fiverr. Then second, you can develop a brand style guide to keep your identity consistent across the boards. Then three, prioritize user experience so it's not just pretty, but it's also functional. And then number four, stay current. Design trends are constantly evolving, so be sure to keep things up to date on the latest trends. This helps ensure that your brand stays fresh and relevant to your customers. I want you to remember that sight is the most important human sense when making buy decisions. 80% of our engagements are by means of sight. So your brand design has to be on point. If you don't pass the eye test, your business is soon to be out of business. Investing in quality brand design can literally be the reason why your business flies or why your business fails. Look, if you're filling this video, I just want you to know that I put together a master cheat sheet of 75, yes, 75 of these branding mistakes that are killing your business. I put the link in the bio so that you can download it for free. Okay, let's keep it going. Branding mistake number four, overcomplicated messaging. If you can't communicate the value your business delivers in a clear, concise way, your business is on life support. You have to master what I call millisecond messaging. And yes, if you're good at context clues, then you probably figured out that millisecond messaging is a message that your audience understands in milliseconds. Yay, so smart. One of the biggest goals as an entrepreneur is to master an easily repeatable message that your people understand relate to, and most importantly, remember. That's it. Your brand messaging should be clear and concise. If it's too complicated or confusing, customers lose interest fast and move on. Overcomplicated messaging makes our brains work harder than we like them to. So in order to protect our peace, we peace out. So how can you simplify your messaging? Here are a few tips. First, focus on the end result or payoff of your product or services rather than the features. Customers are more interested in what your products or services can do for them rather than the technical details, okay? Look at Apple for an example. Now, if you have a droid, tell me in the comments why, and then you can leave from this video. <laughs> I'm just kidding, don't go, I'm playing. But let's look at messaging for the iPhone camera. Rather than fire hosing us with technical jargon that we'll never understand, Apple focuses on the end payoff of the camera features and how they enhance the user's photography experience. For example, some Apple features say portrait mode, night mode, slow fees or slow motion selfies. Rather than explaining the technical details of how these features work, they focus on how they improve the user's photos in different scenarios. These catchy names not only make a feature easy to remember, but it also makes them more approachable and fun. 
And one thing I really love that they do is actually feature real life photos from real life iPhone users. This communicates to us that we don't have to be a professional to take professional looking photos. Number one, make sure your messaging is centered around how your products or services relieve a pain or solve your audience's problems. Number two, use clear and simple language. Avoid using jargon and technical terms that might confuse people. Use words that your audience can easily understand and relate to. A cool website that I like to use is called Hemingway. It's a free app that helps you rework your messaging so that it reads at a fifth or sixth grade level. Keeping your copy at a fifth or sixth grade level helps speed up comprehension. You can check it out at HemingwayApp.com. Three, use visuals to help simplify your messaging. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So in some cases, using images or videos can help communicate your message even more than words can. Use visuals to showcase your offer in action or to actually illustrate the benefits of your offer in real life. Number four, make sure your messaging is consistent across all channels. Your messaging should be the same on your website, social media, and other marketing materials. Consistency helps to build trust and credibility with your audience. Again, please, I beg you, do not overcomplicate your messaging, okay? Focus on the end result, use clear and simple language, use visuals to help communicate your message, and keep it consistent across all channels. Okay, next is branding mistake number five, solely relying on social media. Relying too heavily on social media is a huge mistake. Now, before you curse me out or delete your little Instagram or TikTok, right? Hear me out. Platforms like IG, Twitter, TikTok, and even YouTube are great for getting in front of large audiences, but trust me when I say that they have their limitations. First, let's talk about the biggest hater I know, the algorithm. All an algorithm is is a math equation. And this equation determines what content is most relevant and engaging to each user. Without getting full geek, right? All an algorithm does is analyze someone's past behaviors, the popularity of the post, the time of day, and many other factors. And it shows a user content that they'll probably be interested in. Now, the goofiest part about the algorithm is that it's constantly changing. One day, it can really like your content and push it out to more of your followers. And then the next day, for no reason at all, your content flops. And guess what? You have zero control over this. And I don't like that. I'm an entrepreneur that likes to have control over my marketing efforts. But when you play on these free platforms, they don't care much about the effort that you put into your content. They care about the money. Now I'm not turning this into some crybaby session, all right? The algorithm isn't biased. I see some of the biggest influencers with huge followings complaining about low engagement as well. So they aren't shadow banning you, okay fam? <laughs> At the end of the day, your content has to be four things to even give it a chance of gaining traction and going viral. Your content should be one, educating, two, entertaining, three, encouraging, and four, evoke emotions. Those are my four E's. I see a lot of brands put out subpar content and then blame the algorithm. But if you, one, just made better content, and then two, realize that you have no control over the algorithm and just use it as a tool, You'll sleep better at night, okay? Listen to me, okay? You're on their app with their users, which leads to my next point. You don't own your followers. What I'm talking about is data. Data is the most important asset for businesses these days. If you're serious about building an addicting brand, it's importantly to know, like deeply know, who your audience is. This includes their names, emails, maybe their phone numbers, what pains they have, their goals, their obstacles, what's keeping them from their goals. This list goes on and on. And if you don't know, just because someone follows you doesn't mean you actually get their data into your database. What I mean is you don't wanna build your home or rented land. So your main goal for social media should always be to guide followers off the platform and follow you onto your website so that you can get their contact information. Let me explain. I like to think of social media as breadcrumbs. You use these platforms to display your expertise in your field or show off your amazing products. Now, if the content is good, it'll pique their interest of your followers enough, right, to where they click on the link in your bio and leave Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, right, and go into your main hub, which is your website. Or this can also be something like a link tree, milkshake, there's new things out here coming out every single day. But it's a place where all of your major links are. Now, your website should have some kind of lead magnet that you give away in exchange for some light information, like a name and email. This is called list building. You can learn more about this in another video I did called second number four, lead generation. Now, why is this so important? Well, let me tell you, here's story time. When I first started coaching entrepreneurs, I relied heavily on social media to promote. I spent two months putting together my very first online course. 
This course helps my audience design an attractive brand identity without being some professional graphic designer, okay? I was excited. I really was excited. I was turned. This was gonna be the thing, the product that made me my first million dollars, okay? Why? Because I had somewhat of a large following on Instagram and Facebook. Everything I post got close to a thousand likes. So I'm like, I'm good. I've been promoting over a month and now here's the day of launch, right? I took the entire day to look over my funnel, the landing pages, I made sure the forms worked, email sequences were good, everything was good. You couldn't tell me that I was not gonna make a million dollars in this course launch, right? I scheduled my two posts, right, to go out at 8 a.m. and then 2 p.m. These were the times at my highest engagement. Turned off the computer and I went to sleep. Next morning, I had a good sleep, I wake up, I look at my phone and Instagram isn't loading. I'm exiting, I'm opening, I'm exiting the app, opening the app, exiting the app, and it's not working. So what's the first place I run to to see what's going on? Twitter. I open Twitter and I see the worst trending topic ever. Hashtag Instagram down. I spent months putting together what I thought was the perfect launch strategy that relied solely on social media posts to do all the work for me. Today it sounds so silly to me, but it's probably what you're doing because it's what most entrepreneurs are doing every single day. Now for me, luckily IG started working later that day and I ended up having a $24,000 launch. Now that's not a million dollars, but I was satisfied with the results and immediately started focusing my efforts on building an email list. And that's what you should be focused on too. Social media can be a powerful tool for reaching your target audience and increasing your brand awareness, but don't put all your eggs in that basket. Diversify your marketing efforts. Master list building, email marketing, sales, and SEO. By building a strong presence across multiple channels, you can reach a wider audience and build a more resilient brand that can maneuver through changes in social media algorithms. Next, we have branding mistake number six, not charging enough. First, let's talk about the psychology of pricing. I just showed you design has a huge impact on the way we perceive things. Well, price does too. When customers see a low price, they perceive the product or services as low quality or value. Now, on the other hand, when you see a higher price, we perceive the product or service as a higher value quality, right? This means that if you're not charging enough, you're sending a wrong message to your customers. Let me ask you a question. If you got on eBay and saw that someone was selling a brand new Rolls Royce Ghost for $100, what would you think? Scam, right? Stolen, fake, something fraudulent, something just ain't right. <laughs> well, that's exactly how your business looks when you come in here with these dollar store deals. What sense does it make that you've spent years, like I mean years acquiring the skills that you have? You may have actually helped someone in the past, but you wanna short yourself? Why? Think about it like this. You would laugh, and I mean laugh, if a job offered you an entry-level position working for pennies, doing a thing you've been mastering for five, 10, 20 years. So why did you start a business doing what you love to do just to play yourself? And I hope you hear my heart because I want you to win. Undercharging literally hurts your profitability and sustainability as a business. And if you're not making enough money to cover your cost and make a big enough profit, your small business will either A, stay small, or B, be out of business. This leads to headache, heartache, burnout, hell, even worse, bankruptcy, foreclosure, or divorce. I've seen it all, and I don't want that for you. So charge what you're worth and add tax. Price your products or services according to your value. This means taking into account the quality, the uniqueness, and benefits of what you offer. It also means understanding your target audience and what they're willing to pay for. When we started our branding agency, I was hesitant to charge too much for my services. I was worried that customers wouldn't be willing to pay a higher price, so I kept our prices low. After a while, I realized that lower prices attracted lower quality clients. You know the ones, the cheap, want everything for nothing type of people. The ones that say stuff like, I don't know what I want, but I'll know it when I see it. Or sorry for calling so late, but I need this by tomorrow. Or that should be easy to fix, right? If you or someone you know is a victim of creative abuse, DM me at, at Justin J. Dunn. You may be eligible for compensation. Pound in creative abuse. Please do not ever be that client, okay? Anyway, when you charge premium prices, you attract premium buyers. Now slow down, this doesn't mean just up and start adding extra zeros to your sticker price because your price should match the value that you're delivering. Honestly, if you really wanna sell a bunch of your stuff, the value should be perceived as 10 times the price to make your offer a no-brainer. But that's another masterclass and I may teach on that later, all right? But ultimately what I mean is you should reevaluate your prices and do some research on what other businesses are doing in your industry. 
And for myself, after looking at the market compared to my quality, I felt like I was significantly undercharging for my services compared to my competitors. So I decided to increase my prices to better reflect the value I deliver. And to my surprise, our business actually started growing. Customers were willing to pay higher prices for higher quality work. We increased our profit margins and yearly revenue, all without having to work more. Not charging enough is a common branding mistake, but it's also a fixable one. By pricing your offers according to their value and understanding your target audience, you can build a profitable, sustainable business. Okay, finally, branding mistake number seven, focusing too much on your competition. While it's important to be aware of your competition, focusing too much on them can lead to a lack of focus on your brand. It's okay to be inspired, but you have to be very careful that inspiration doesn't turn into desperation. And what I mean is you can get caught staring at an influencer that you like or a competitor brand and actually lose sight of your own brand trying to be like them. This can lead to you falling in a sea of sameness and even being accused of copying. This is why I really hate TikTok. Yes, I said it. I know I sound like an angry millennial, but I really hate TikTok. Why? Because all I ever see when my wife makes me watch videos, hey babe, are people remaking the same dance, telling the same jokes and remixing the same memes. And it feels like it's only like a hundred original creators out there and then you got a billion people just remaking their original content am i lying no i'm not side note shout out to all the original content creators out there okay keep doing your thing keep carrying these apps but please make sure that you're getting paid so i say all that to remind you that if you want to build an addicting brand the name of the game is differentiation it's uniqueness these are the things that set you above and beyond your competition. Now it's okay to look at the people and businesses that either inspire you or compete against you, but there has to be a line drawn where you're only looking to see how you can do it bigger or how you can do it better. Do it in your own way, in a way that aligns with your brand and relates to your audience. I remember not too long ago, I had to catch myself. I found myself looking at influencers that were in my niche, doing similar stuff that I'd like to do. I started beating myself up with words and thoughts that just weren't healthy mentally. I would get on social media, see these people doing their thing. And I think stuff like, dang, why aren't you posting like them? Dang, why didn't you think of that? When are you gonna start? I could do that too. I did this for months and I didn't know it at the time, but there was a real negative effect on my mental health because I was focusing way too much on other people and brands. Social media makes it so easy for us to connect all day, every day. And this leads to everybody comparing their lives to someone else's. Even though that perfect influencer that you really love only posted the 20th take of that video or the edited version of that selfie. It's toxic, I hate it. And I'm glad I caught myself because it led to a number of negative feelings. I felt discouraged, unmotivated, cluttered, stressed, right? I lost my identity and purpose for even being on social media to help my people, the people I was put here to serve. I lost that. Now I know everybody watching this understands what I'm talking about. So if that's you, I have two options to give you that'll help you to get focused and not focus so much on your competition. And those options are unfollow or mute. I had to either unfollow or mute a lot of people in order to protect my peace. And this is no offense to those people, shout out to them. They're probably still doing their thing, but in order for me to scroll through a healthy feed that inspired me to create, I had to remove the things that made me feel bad, the things that distracted me from my own visions and goals. Please stay locked into serving the people that you were put here to serve. What's for you is for you, and who is for you is for you. Make sense? So there you have it, the seven branding mistakes that are killing your business. Lack of clarity, inconsistency, little to no investment in design, overcomplicated messaging, solely relying on social media, not charging enough, and focusing too much on competition. These are some of the most common branding mistakes that entrepreneurs make. By avoiding these mistakes and prioritizing brand clarity, authenticity, consistency, pricing, focus, and design, you can build a strong addicting brand that attracts your favorite customers and hit your business goals every single time. This video hit on definition, execution, and perception seconds. But when you master all seven seconds, you will build a business that builds unlimited income, unlimited impact, and unlimited independence so that you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want with the people that you love the most. This channel is for dreamers and action takers who desire to find their purpose through entrepreneurship. The ones who wanna build a business that frees their time up so that they can create more memories with the people they care about the most. And if that's you, hit that like button. Come on, hit it, hit that like button. 
then go tell three people about this channel and let's build your seven second brand. And if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out.